Then, then I think if we're trying to understand Tony Blair, just, just, just let me just finish with, with sort of ten, uh, to ten defining characteristics as I see them. The fact that he does, he's built himself up um, incrementally. I mean, here is a man who, when he was at university, uh, when he was an undergraduate, wouldn't have attended um, a, a politics uh, talk on Sunday evening. Been in a bar, you know, could have been at a rock concert, uh, could have been having a great time. Um, he, 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 he just wasn't interested, at school he wasn't interested in politics. And his gap year, would you not expect somebody who was going to go on uh, a, a, and, and become prime minister to at least have done something uh, like, for example, go off and, uh, and work in Africa? Um, or, 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 or do something that was socially worthwhile and, and valuable. He tried to promote rock bands, and when he was no good at that, he ended up stacking uh, grocery shelves in High Street Ken, um, <laughs> which is fine. Um, but, but it isn't what you expect uh, of a future prime minister. And yet, step by step, and, and, and I, I track this through in, in, in the biography, um, and at the moment I'm just I'm just about to embark on the second volume of the biography, which I've got to complete you know, in, in this, I haven't even started yet, which is scary. <laughs> uh, and, and, but in the first one, I, 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 I track him through 20 events that built up this man who had no background or pedigree or interest in politics, let alone labor politics or social conscience, um, and, and how he emerged within a period of 10 years into somebody who was passionate, who was burning about it. Uh, and I think that's profoundly interesting. Do ask me why, but, but you know how that took place. But, but that's the first distinctive characteristic. The second is, is the role of people in his life. Um, and, and I've built biography around 20 people who made him what he is, because he's not like Mrs. Thatcher, not like Ted Heath, not like Callaghan, not like Gordon Brown, not like Cameron, uh, not like William Hay, not like these people who from a very early age had this burning passion and interest that they were going to get involved in politics. And the key people around him, the 20 people, include, obviously, um, who, who would you put in that? Cherie. Cherie. Cherie, massively important. Uh, Cherie, uh, who absolutely loathes and detests Gordon Brown. Uh, and by the way, by the way, you don't seriously believe she didn't say that. But, uh, and you know she said it because because of the quickness of the quickness and the speed of the denial that came out um, uh, 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 about the platform. Uh, she, she's um, uh, her, her language is very purple about Gordon Brown, um, so, uh, and, and she's emboldened her husband uh, very much when he had the wobble. Um, it, 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 when the, there were problems um, very close in, in, uh, to, to, to him, she was the one who then felt that, you know, was this all worth it? This was in 2004. And, and, and then she came back very strongly and has made him do it. Cherie, uh, very important. His, his mother, uh, tremendously important. His mother died just after he came down from Oxford in 1975. Father met him on the station at Durham when he came back from Oxford with all his stuff. Um, uh, after finals, and uh, he, he saw that his father looked very down-hearted, uh, 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 and the fact of his mother's cancer was kept very much from him when he was doing finals. The gravity of the situation, and the father said, "You know how serious it, it was," and he said, you know, "She's not going to die, is, is she?" And he said, "Yes," and he went to see her, and they had very important meetings at the hospital where she also spoke to him a lot about religion. Um, and, and, and so a third character is God of 20. Um, and I slip God in there, so that's very important. And, 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 and God has, is, is something which I think is my third general characteristic. Behind everything that Tony Blair does, you can see religion. And he does read, he is currently reading uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament every single night before he goes to sleep. So there we are. Incremental events building up, role of people, uh, the importance of God in his life. Fourthly, the fact that, that, that again, you can understand everything about him, uh, uh, he positions himself in that center ground. He's always looked for the middle position. He's never liked his own party, despite what he said. He's never trusted it. He's never felt part of it. Uh, he has always wanted not to follow it. He's wanted to lead it, and he's wanted it to come to him. And, and, and that sense of hugging the center ground uh, it is absolutely fundamental 
in that whole insight. And obviously, is that not logical as a rational um, political player? Uh, that that's where the votes are, that's where the floating voters are. Uh, and that perception about hugging the centre ground is uniquely um, a, a, a Blairite plus Philip Poole plus Peter Mandelson. Um, uh, other, other key uh, features, his, uh, his sense of, of, of faith in, in America, that you have to follow America at all costs. I'm going to come to an end, actually. Um, and and, and, uh, and you know, this is interesting. And refrain from criticizing America in public. Now, this is very odd because he has three foreign policy aims that are very dear to him. Uh, one is um, uh, aid to Africa. Uh, second is climate change, that you might find odd. Uh, and third is a belief that the res a resolution to the, the, uh, the, 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 the 50 and more year struggle uh, between um, uh, Israel and the Palestinians, taking all the way back to the founding of the state of Israel in 1948 and before, uh, that the resolution, uh, a harmonious resolution of that problem lies at the whole heart of sorting out the Middle East. And on all three areas, uh, he's run into opposition from Clinton, ran into opposition from Clinton, but far more uh, from Bush. And he's refrained from coming out. Expect him to say more about those three areas. Expect to see frustration um, uh, with Bush, with the administration. He blocked him so hard on all those positions. Um, and then just finishing off about Blair, I, I, I think we see a man who is going to care very much about his legacy, and I think he's going to be very disappointed. He will try hard to leave at a moment, leave at a high point, uh, to leave at a moment of his own choosing. I don't think he's going to find a high point, and I think that he will be unlikely uh, to find a moment of his own choosing. I uh, very much need this, that, that your thoughts. Uh, I've, I've given you there just a scattering, a, 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 a smattering of, 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 of thoughts, and and more or less stuck to my time of, 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 um, <coughs> uh, of, of uh, um, about 25 minutes. I think just for just one last thing to say is that uh, the pivotal moment uh, came on, on the 11th of September. It's the pivot on which the whole of his premiership hinged. It isn't uh, the election in 2001, which was a very tame manifesto. Um, very, very tame, but very influenced by Brown, who supported him uh, again and again on his domestic agenda the public services. But that day of when he was at the Grand Hotel in Brighton, he was just about to deliver a speech to the TUC, uh, talking about why uh, the monolithic public services had to be broken up, why, and he was thinking very much of the public sector trade unions, and, and it was going to be a, a, a hard-hitting new Labour speech and then the, the attacks on, on Twin Towers and the Pentagon occurred. Uh, and, and he just, uh, it, it just, uh, it, it swung everything. Uh, from that moment onwards, he lost so much time, so much political capital, so much focus. He tried going ahead with, with his own agenda, which was just beginning to crystallize and form. His premiership would have been utterly different had Mohammed um, Atta and his 18 colleagues not decided to do what they did on that uh, crisp morning in New York and, and uh, in Washington. 